Yeah. So, hey, you know here on New Day, we love to highlight smaller communities in Western Washington. Well, check this out. I recently spoke to the author of Urban Bremerton, which gives us a deeper look into Kitsap County's biggest city. Here's my chat with author David Albright and contributor Francis Lee. Why Bremerton? What made you decide to move there? Yeah, so Bremerton was kind of a compromise between my partner and I. I'm a big city person. I'm always thinking about urban design and things, architecture. And so I like to be in a city, whereas he likes to be a little further out, a little quieter places. So Bremerton was a place where we could still get to Seattle, still have a walkable neighborhood that I really like, but it's a little quieter and a little more out of the way. That's really unique. I hadn't thought about that. I've always dreamed of island living myself, so that's interesting. So how did the, this book, this project, how did that come about? When COVID hit, um, like all of us, I was going on a lot of walks around the neighborhood and the city, and I just kind of started noticing all these really unique buildings and streetscapes. And so I started photographing them kind of with no particular plan in mind. And as the pandemic dragged on, I kind of started pulling it together into a bigger project. So then I combined it with some essays from local writers and interviews with a couple of artists, and it turned into a book. What a beautiful thing to create through such a difficult and dark time. What is so unique about Bremerton's architecture? So one of the things I love about Bremerton architecture is that it's, it's all kind of at a really small scale. So compared to a place like Seattle, things are just built smaller, they're built closer together. It kind of has the vibe of, it's, it's never been a place that's like dreamed of being the next Manhattan like Seattle did or even Tacoma did. So things are kind of at a more modest scale and I think that's really unique. Sounds really authentic, like the authentic spirit of a town. Well, Francis, my question for you, what inspires you as a writer living in Bremerton? Living in Bremerton has been wonderful in so many ways, and also living in Bremerton during the pandemic, as well as its own unique experience. But just the act of slowing down and watching the hummingbird drink nectar out of the feeder outside the window, or even just talking to my neighbors next door, just having that slower pace of life, I think is just a really great, great way to live a more reflective life and to think about, you know, all the problems that are going on in the world and what is my role and how can I kind of encourage others to play a role in their own communities to, to make a difference, right, to make a change. So definitely the slower pace of life, but also I think people are just really kind here. Um, when I got in public, of course, we're all socially distant, but, you know, people wave to me and, um, you know, before the pandemic, they would smile at me yeah. and I just like never got that vibe living in Seattle. Like, I just feel really, really held by community members, even people that I don't even know. That is so true. I will mirror that because every time I've been to Bremerton uh, for work as a reporter, always welcomed in the community, always wonderful, nice, helpful people. But you specifically focus on bridges. What is the significance of that? Yeah, so um, the essay that I have um, in, in David's book, it's called Becoming a Bridge Person in Precarious Times. And it's really inspired by living in Bremerton and so I live in West Bremerton and in between two of the bridges that connect our part of the land to East Bremerton. And so I'm just on bridges all the time, going to get places, going from here to there, you know, otherwise I'd have to like take the long way around to go, um, to East Bremerton and just really appreciating bridges, appreciating the beautiful view and the expanses of water, um, the Dyes Inlet that is underneath the bridges, but more importantly, just thinking about how different of a place this would be without bridges. Um, we, it would just take us so long to get anywhere. And so um, just living in the Trump presidency uh, during the pandemic and also during a big um, Black Lives Matter uh, racial reckoning and uprising, just thinking about how more people need to be acting like bridges to kind of help bridge our divided nation. Um, and I know that's a very lofty thing, but I've seen that happen in Bremerton. You know, there, there were like Trump and Biden signs like on the same street in my neighborhood, you know, but we all share resources in our little free libraries. People know each other, people know their neighbors. And so to me, like being a bridge person is that people who are committed to justice do have a responsibility to be brave and take risks, leave our ideological bubble in the same way that I love to Seattle and to reach out to people 
who aren't like us, but to find places of common ground so we can build community together. Yes. Wow, I feel like applauding. Yes, be right? a rich person. I <laughs> love that terminology. Oh, I love it. Yes, and in the in the backdrop of Bremerton, I love that. I love going there, and it's been a while for me. Well, let's travel. Even though travel, I know, travel's difficult right now due to COVID. And actually, that's what you and I are talking about when we come mm -hmm. back. Our thoughts on the marathon of Zoom calls and meetings that never seem to end, right? Yep. All right, we'll be right back.